We have seen that logistic regression gives us a linear decision boundary when we look at it in the feature space. But just as in linear regression, we can actually allow logistic regression to make nonlinear decisions, have a nonlinear decision boundary. And that's what we're going to look at in this video. And again, you probably can guess the answer already. We're going to use some form of basis functions. Also, exactly as in linear regression, we can regularize the models by putting a penalty on the model parameters. So the procedure for including nonlinearity into the logistic regression model is very similar to what we did in linear regression. So all we're going to do is that instead of using our input feature X, the original input feature X, we're going to replace that feature vector X with some basis functions. And we'll look at a few examples of that in just a few slides. The other thing that we might want to do with a logistic regression is to apply regularization. And again, just as in linear regression, we're simply going to do that by adding a term to the model loss, penalizing the size of the weights. So if the model loss, the original loss, which is a function of the parameter vector w, is equal to the negative log likelihood of our parameters, then what we're doing now is we're adding a penalty term. Um, and let's say we're going to do L2 regularization, then we're going to add the square of um, the individual parameter values. And in this case, you can write it out a little bit more completely just for binary um, logistic regression. This is going to be equal to. Here I've just written out the negative log likely here, and we're just adding this penalty term here. And instead of using L2 regularization, um, which is reach regression, uh, you can also use L1 regularization or um, the lasso. And again, normally what we do is we don't penalize W0. And from the previous um, video, you should maybe have a good idea of why you won't want to penalize the bias term. Let's have a look a little bit specifically at uh, example of using basis functions. So here again, I've got the iris data. Here I've got petal length petal width. And in this case, we've changed it into a binary classification problem where we want to classify whether something is a versicolor or not. Now, if you just fit straightforward logistic regression to this data set, then this is the answer that you get. This is your decision boundary. And it's clear why that's the case. Um, for this specific example, to use a linear decision boundary to separate out versicolor from the not versicolor examples is actually not possible. In the previous videos, we looked at Virginicas where it was actually possible to separate them out. But in this case, we just can't do it with logistic regression with a linear decision boundary. And I guess it's worth mentioning here already that logistic regression in a way is already a non-linear um, model. We've got that sigmoid over the uh, weight with the dot product with the feature vectors, but the decision boundary that we get from a logistic regression model is still linear. So it's still a linear classifier in the sense that you will always get a straight line. Now, what would you do to solve this problem with your standard logistic regression toolkit? We'll use basis functions. So here, instead of using um, x1, x2, I've replaced that with the basis function look, looking like this. We've got one, x1, x2, x1 squared, and x2 squared. And going through exactly the same procedure that we went through before, but replacing everywhere where I had an x just with this vector, then I get this decision boundary, which is a pretty good classifier for whether something as being an iris versicolor or not. And here again, I visualize the probabilities. So anything with the dark blue is actually a positive and anything in dark red is actually a negative. And here we see that this model very, very clearly is able to uh, correctly classify something as being an iris versicolor or not. It is kind of cool to see that we can take a linear classifier like logistic regression. And by just changing the inputs using this basis functions, we can allow it to make these nonlinear type of predictions. As a little pointer to more advanced uh, machine learning models, in some way, neural networks can be seen to do the same thing. 
So a uh, neural network trained for classification uh, would look quite similar to a logistic regression model, but internally it would actually learn something that looks like basis functions. It would learn these combinations of the input features which are useful for making accurate um, predictions. You don't have to worry about that too much. Hopefully we'll get to neural networks in a future video, but just to give you some idea of how we can take these relatively simple ideas that we looked at in this video and extend it to much more advanced machine learning models.